Hey, Troglodytes, welcome back to another lefty edition of Trogly's Guitars. All right, uh, the last one was a 74. This one's made about 11 years later in 1985. This is kind of, 85 is when kind of Norlin was selling it to the Jeskowitz guy. I think the official takeover was in like 87, 88, something like that. So this one was made a few years kind of before the prehistoric reissues kind of came out. So if you're not familiar with 80s SGs, uh, my favorite feature of them is they fixed something that I feel is broken on SGs and they moved the input jack from there to where it should be on the side. That just saves so many problems. You don't have to worry about cracking your guitar by accidentally hitting it like that. Or just dropping it and just missing it, damaging your top. <laughs> Stuff like that. I wish all SGs looked like that, but I'm more of a Les Paul guy myself, so maybe that's why. Alright, so as far as an 80s SG goes, I mean, they're very similar to like 70s SGs because they actually still have tar back pickups. I'm sure they're a little bit different because, you know, it's 10, 11 years apart. But they are Tim Shaw era uh, tarmac pickups. The only difference is these guys uh, originally come with uh, little stickers on the back, which these guys do still have. All right, this guy is in good shape. Um, we got a little bit to go over on him, but for the most part, he's all original. You got your kind of larger peg head style here. It's kind of like a paddle board. Uh, it, it, it looks like it would take binding pretty well and look just like a custom if you wanted to customize it, but I would definitely not suggest that. So you've got some just string change wear up here. Looks like some scratches there, but nothing too bad in general. Uh, this guy was refretted though, which means it's been played quite a bit. I wouldn't necessarily call this a professional refret but I wouldn't say it's completely amateur either you do have some light chipping of the uh, rosewood Let's see if you can see any more I mean it's just very minor I mean it's not going to affect your playability of the instrument by any means I guess here's the next biggest one is up here so it looks like uh, at the beginning and kind of towards the end they made a few little goofs but nothing too bad. And uh, the frets, uh, a, a little bit sharp. I mean, when I was playing this, once again, as a righty guitar player, so as a, a lefty, you might, and it might differ a little bit, you might want to get um, the fret, like, sides a little, I guess a little filed more level with the uh, binding, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Or smooth them out. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not terrible. You can run your fingers up and down like this and it's not gonna cut you as I'm showing you. But, I mean, you do feel a little bit, but not a lot. So I'm just trying to be honest there. But besides that, uh, it must have been fairly uh, recently. I mean, they're definitely larger than the stock frets, but I mean, not by too much. I think I, that, uh, in that 74 Gibson SG video, I was saying I wanted them just a little taller. This is kind of what I was going for. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm guessing up here, when the guy was, uh, you know, leveling this off, his file must have caught here and took some of the finish off. I know that's a very common area for a, uh, a heel repair or something. I mean, that's just your typical finish checking and line forming where the heel meets the guitar body anyways. It happens on all white guitars over time. And you kind of got that going up there. But you can kind of see here there's been a paint touch up. I'm guessing his file caught that and kind of hurt the guitar a little bit there. So they touched it up. You can also see there's a paint touch up right here. And when you get close, you can kind of see that it's kind of a little bit more of a cream color. But from far away, it looks pretty good. Um, I think, I don't think that one was touched up. Let, let's just say there's a few areas 
like that that have been touched up. I would have to bring the black light back over here to uh, show you. And I'll, I'll do that at the end of the video. We'll see if uh, that can show us anything. So as you can see, you do have some beautiful checking on this guitar. But along with checking, you also have some dings that obviously went through the finish and needed a little bit of a touch up. So checking from there. Once again, original tar back pickups. Everything uh, stock on this one as well, except for obviously the refret and the strap buttons are shawlers. Some more beautiful finish checking and some little dings. And more finish checking and little dings. But I mean, once again, I've looked at this under black light because the guy who sold it to me was uh, a little worried that there might have been some type of a heel repair here, but you know, viewing it under black light, you know, looking at what I have for me, it does not appear that way. So it's just kind of a nicely played, uh, pretty rare uh, mid 80s Gibson SG. All right, back of the headstock here. It's a pretty early uh, 85, 52nd day of the year. Maybe what, February? 12th or 11th. We got some wear here on the finish. Looks like a small little chip there. That shows you have a mahogany neck. Now up here, uh, once again, inconvenient place for finish checking because it's always scary buying a guitar with finish checking up here, but that's not a brake crack repair or anything like that. That is just finish checking, believe me or not. But the reason why that, you know, the finish is kind of more yellow in that area, as you can see up there, is it looks like this, this was in one of those stands. You know, the typical ones just have a hanger like this, right? But some of them kind of have that grasper hook where you put it down and then it kind of grabs it. And it's kind of got a little bit of a larger of a footprint grabbing on it. I'm guessing it was on one of those because... As you can see, it's got that yellow tint there, a little bit on the back of the neck, as well as on the opposite side of the neck. So under black light, that does not show up as a uh, paint touch up or anything. So I'm going with a stand rash there. And you got some finish checking, as you always unfortunately do have on light guitars. But fortunately, um, you don't really have that line running up and down the neck as bad as usual on uh, white guitars so very cool so you got a small finish check there and uh, some there i mean some average nicks and dings on the neck and some more finish checks as you can see so obviously this guitar was in and out of warm and cold weather to uh, make those finish checks but it does appear to be break crack and repair free um Let's look at the back here. We can focus here. There we go. All right, stock pots, stock everything in there. Uh, you've got some more stand burn here. A little bit there, but you can see where the uh, strap kind of wore away at the finish here. So you can see what the original color was. But not a lot of uh, buckle wear on this one as compared to the last one but definitely still played. Some more finish checking on the side there. And your average nicks and dings. Some more. So, I mean, it's overall in good condition. I mean, once again, lefty stuff is kind of hard to find. Well taken care of lefty stuff, even more so. Add on top of it an all original example, I mean, minus frets and uh, strap buttons, hard to find. So if you're a lefty, this is kind of like a oh, day. <laughs> this comes with a slightly later case. Uh, this case was introduced, uh, I mean, typically this is considered a 90s case, but I bet you probably saw these starting in like 89 and the early 90s. But a uh, very good case. Very cool. Those were empty, so I'll, I'll throw that packet away. I mean, 
it's in good shape. I mean, it's got some average wear and tear. But you do have the pink shroud. It works pretty well with the guitar. It's a very nice case. So, if you think you might be interested in owning this really cool lefty white custom, not custom, I'm sorry, SG standard, <laughs> feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S. Don't forget to check out the reverb listing, like and share the video, and hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. All right, we'll catch you later, troglodytes. Bye.